Okay, so we are at Vertex Performance. The CRX has been standing here since the last event. So I know a lot of you are probably wondering why is the car standing here and why aren't there any updates regarding this car? So yeah, unfortunately the last event the car had some mechanical failure. Also finally we ended up fixing our transmission problems. I got myself a new gearbox, dog first to fourth box and the car felt amazing like i had literally no issues shifting from first into second finally <laughs> but yeah unfortunately the engine uh, came in so i'll add the video in um, and then show you guys what the run was like decent launch into second gear the car was moving and it was definitely on a number unfortunately into third it was where the shit hit the fan so i think i think i i actually ended up damaging one of the conrad box sorry for the wind noise underneath the car and not too sure if you guys can see this but right there there's a little hole in the oil pan and a little indentation if you can see there as well so that looks as if cylinder four's conrad bolt failed on us luckily for me it pierced straight down and not obviously spiral in the sub assembly and cut itself through so i did check <laughs> that was all the oils were i found um but there's nothing else on the on the outside of the casing so that looks very promising as well as the spark plug in cylinder four it was still in one piece so that's also a good sign so that doesn't that that looks as if the cylinder might have um might have got away with uh, that catastrophic failure i'm now oh i'm just being hopeful <laughs> today we actually ended up removing the the ecu and the engine harness and all the electronics so we can strip and assess the damage and know for sure what is the issue with the engine so yeah, I'm, I'm obviously trying to get the car ready as soon as possible for when our race season starts now in, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it could be March. So I wanna be, I wanna be ready for our first event. I wanna, I wanna break new PVs and have obviously a lot of fun with this car because last year wasn't too fun. Like every event as you guys all know was a bit of a fail. So let's try to start the year off with a positive note. <laughs> okay so it's been a few days and we got the crx home and today we finally decided to start stripping and see what's going on with the with the engine so dane's underneath the car he, he just pulled off the sump and it's looking uh it's looking very very colorful inside there yeah, so let's, let's let's show you guys yeah so here's the the damage All kinds of madness going on in here and that was where whatever piece of the conrad pierced through there's a hole yeah, over there. Yeah. and this ladies and gentlemen is my conrad the cylinder four so as i suspected rod bolt failure rod bolt snapped yeah it snapped in half and then oh, look, at, look at how these uh, magnetic sound plugs work it's very effective actually so we can uh, obviously strip down the oil pump and inspect the oil pump for any debris like this inside of it so fingers crossed guys fingers crossed uh, let's see the damage on the block yep as expected rod bolt completely snapped off 
uh, splash tray. That's where it pierces through. Let's see, I'm gonna take a magnet. This is what I pulled out already from the um, oil pumps pickup. Oh, yeah. You just lost one cylinder, you know? Replace the plug. Get all this. <laughs> Damn. This this happens though. Yes, it can <laughs> ruin you. <laughs> but um, we always pick ourselves up from here. Who knows? We might even go faster with a more inferior setup. You never know. Obviously, have to remove the cylinder head, and hopefully the cylinder head is still okay. So we can at least salvage the head, the sub assembly. Obviously, we're gonna have to chuck. We can still save the three cylinders, so pistons and rods. Um, then obviously we can just replace the one cylinder, so one piston, one rod. Then at least the sub assembly or this internals can be uh, built in another sub. Inspect the damage. Hello there. Cylinder 4. Luckily the piston is still in one piece. There's a bit of... Well, not really damage, but... I mean, I, the piston looks like this. It is fine. Yeah, it is fine. Cylinder 3 is okay, cylinder 2 is okay. That was all the battle scars over there. Cylinder 1 is okay. Cylinder 4, however, as you can see there, it's slightly rotated. That's obviously because of the con rod. Okay, so Dane's just removing the timing chain guide, lower timing chain guide. So what that does is, if ever, let's say you need to be, let's say you want to swap out cams in the car and um, you don't want to go through all the trouble of having to remove the timing chain cover. So what you do is you basically just open up the, the timing chain tensioners uh, plate. You can obviously uh, unbolt the timing chain tensioner and free up the chain from the cam side, from the verniers or cam gears. And that, that will allow for the chain to basically be locked in its position. So it won't like drop the minute you let go of the chain. So that's basically all that it is there for. We can show you guys on a later stage how this gets uh, installed. Take it out. The damage. <laughs> Actually, very really lucky that there's no no signs of impact onto the cylinder here, so that's good. It is good, but obviously this <laughs> obviously isn't salvageable, which is not the problem. Like this happens, so at least the engine can be rebuilt. We need to just replace one cylinder, new piston, new rod, and then obviously that can be installed into. Um, a new sub assembly but this here is the culprit that's what i'm guessing the rod bolt snapped off and that's the cap yeah they're still in good condition
Okay, so we made a couple of changes in the engine bay. I uh, relocated the fuel pump that was over here to that area there. Um, obviously because we have ITBs on now. So we will obviously be running the airbox. So um, the reason for moving the fuel pump was so that I could shift the battery ever so slightly. So that we have enough clearance for the airbox that's going to be installed on here. And I think it looks much neater also having the pump lay directly onto the, the white plate. And I mean, we got over enough clearance here for if, if the engine were to rock and so on. And our only issue at the moment we're sitting with is the headlight. The backing plate for the airbox is literally in the same area where the headlight was located. So we'll probably have to make some, some plan here, either pull a mold from the headlight, a fiberglass mold or something, and then just trim that area of the headlight for the airbox to clear correctly. While I was at it, I installed obviously a dummy cylinder head so I could be able to build the engine harness for the FT550. So it's basically, I'd say 90% completed. So yeah, cam sensors in, ECT. And then what I did here was, this over here is the coil packs uh, harness. So reason for me putting a plug on this is so that in future, if we decide to swap out this OEM coils for like the FuelTech coil pack, then it's literally going to be a matter of wiring the coil packs to um, a Deutsch connector. Mm. It's going to be like quick disconnect if you put it that way. And then <laughs> this little mess over here, this I will run a, a boot over and then just insulate it. I know it does look a little sketch, but it will do for now. Because I don't know, I'll, I'll probably <laughs> end up doing this harness over later. But I mean, for now, it's everything is on its place and it can work. Uh, injector harness also I did the same thing I used the same idea with making it quick disconnect so over here you can see this is my injector harness over here also connected to a toy connector as well as my TPS sensor that's located here start the signals in and then what I still have to do is I ran the crank sensor wiring separate from the coil pack wiring because um, I was told crank sensor signal might get affected by the coils um, when it comes to like noise and so on so I just thought okay let's just keep it separate from the coil packs and then that's oil pressure over there as well we got front wheel speed over here so I can either use the existing um, speedo sensor in the transmission or I might just run this to another like wall sensor or something that can read the ABS ring I'd say it's almost completed. <laughs> Just a few minor touches here and there. So let me show you the interior. Okay, so the 550 is installed into the crust area. Um, it looks, in my opinion, it looks very neat in the crust area instead of bringing it upright to the uh, steering wheel. And I mean, from my seating position, I can definitely see everything clearly from where I'm seated. Um, I'm still using my wireway switch panel to control everything. So this is ECU, fuel pump, water pump, fan, as well as the lights and then the starter. And then I also ended up getting myself the fuel tech strain gauge. So the strain gauge literally plugs straight into the 550 harness. So that's also another feature when you're running a 550. So you won't need to buy the gear controller because that is integrated into the 550. Yeah, like I said, it's just a few more buttoning up to do and then we basically completed with the wiring. I already deepened most of the excess wiring from the main harness and then I just kept a couple of extras. I know we'll need still a rear wheel speed and then I might put the two-step on a button as well and then I just kept an extra spare a white wire just in case we need anything else um, wired to the car to suit our needs as well. So yeah, that's somewhat of an update on the CRX. We obviously don't have much time left because our race season starts in February. 
So what I've decided in that short space of time, maybe I might swap out this uh, broken engine, put it aside. We can always rebuild it at the later stage and then use a K24 sub assembly with a bolt head. So we keep the K24 sub as completely stock as possible. Obviously with the exception of replacing the oil pump, we're gonna use a, a better oil pump. So we'll swap out the oil pump for the four piston pump or RRC pump or even a, a OEM RBC pump. And then tune the car on pump fuel, try E85, move over to methanol and then maybe see how much more we can gain by using VPM5. And then we can do the comparison. I did mention it a, a while back, wanting to compare the intake versus the ITBs. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to see if there's substantial gains going from intake to ITBs, or who knows, maybe the intake will actually end up making more power. So that's definitely gonna be very exciting. And then another quest I want to take on is to see how fast we can go with a stock sub assembly. So I know these guys um, all over the world running nines on a stock block, but obviously they're using different types of fuel. So maybe we can tap into to doing that experiment and see, because I know for certain it's going to be way more fun. <laughs> we'll have way more sea time in the car. We'll get to, to mess around with a lot of things, knowing that the sub assembly is stock. So yeah, I definitely think this will make for some pretty interesting content, very informative content. And then surely we're going to have a lot of fun because there's going to be a lot of racing this year. And who knows, like I said, who knows what if we can be able to accomplish a 10 second run on a stock block. Maybe even nines, <laughs> you never know. So yeah, we almost had 5,000 subscribers, which is pretty amazing. Please be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And what I want to do is when we reach 10,000 subscribers, just so that I can say thank you from my side and show my appreciation, I want to put together a prize and give that away to a lucky subscriber. So yeah, without further ado, thank you very much for watching and see you guys soon.